Thank you. So I went public five months ago. I worked here in Phoenix, actually, as a content moderator for Facebook. I worked directly for Cognizant. And uh, so I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, and I'll talk about some of the things I've done here in Arizona with election fraud, and um, I worked together with Josh and Barnett a little bit on a few things. So I started working as a content moderator, which basically means I just delete, I delete stuff on the internet. <laughs> I delete posts, comments, that was my job, literally. I, I got posts and comments, and I had to decide if I had to delete them or not. So I started in March of 2018, as a bilingual content moderator here in uh, Phoenix, off to the I-17 in Dunlap. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. So my first month of training, I'm, I'm sitting there, I realized it was Facebook. So I'm working for Facebook and the trainer was talking openly about how much she loves Obama and how Obama is her Patronus charm. So I was like, yeah, this isn't normal. This is kind of weird, right? So I'm going into it, I didn't know what to expect. So about a year into it, I noticed about 19 things that were kind of 19 examples of, of bias where things were kind of biased against conservative, like the actual Facebook policy was biased. Who would have thunk, right? Um, so it's things we all kind of knew, but we didn't have the evidence. So I wrote a letter in May of 2019. I wrote a letter to uh, a few members of Congress and uh, senators, and I didn't hear back. I had I gave them the 19 examples I'd found, just kind of have, yeah. And so I didn't hear back, so I started, excuse me, started reaching out to a couple of news outlets, to a couple of people. So I ended up with Project Veritas. So back in uh, June of 2019, I first reached out to them and started filming. It's kind of funny because my wife, I, I thought she didn't know about it initially. So I started filming with the hidden camera without telling her about it, right? And then uh, a couple months later, you know, I, I broke the news, uh, but it wasn't news to her because she already knew. Uh, she, she said, she said, Ryan, I know you're sneaky, but you're not that sneaky. Uh, <laughs> but it was, it was, it was nerve-wracking because you're filming with the hidden camera. Uh, you're wear essentially wearing a wire, so to speak, um, and, and you, so you're really paranoid. You really think everyone knows you're, you're wearing a camera. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And so, Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. It was a sick sacrifice because, you know, um, I, it, was, it was a great job, and we had, I had this, these, these discussions with my wife, and we had good health insurance with this job. And so I was filming for about nine months total. Um, the project actually ended. So Cognizant, Cognizant had a three-year, $200 million project with Facebook, which goes you to show how much Facebook was spending on content moderation here in the US. They brought all the jobs overseas to the US, which is good, I, I, I'm not gonna complain about jobs. But the reason that Facebook brought these jobs to the US was because of 2016. So when we got hired there, they said, we were like, oh, why did they hire all these people in the U.S.? You know, it's expensive to hire people in the U.S. And so they said, well, you know, uh, so Facebook essentially told us that, you know, because Russia colluded with you know, the 2016 election, they wanted to be able to monitor more closely the elections in the U.S. Oh. Yeah. Boom. So, so that, that's what happened. So uh, anyway, so this was in 20, yeah. So I got hired in 2018, March of 2018. So we're monitoring elections. I was monitoring the Mexican presidential election, but I was getting all the updates about the U.S. content as well. And, and at a later, a later point, I was switched to the North American queue. But I saw training decks for for every, pretty much every country in the world. We had election training decks for Canada, for Spain, for Mexico, uh, Venezuela. So why is Facebook so worried about elections and election fraud, right? So these are the things that I saw, and, and so I, I documented this, I filmed the, the po actual policy that Facebook had in concerning elections, just to you know, give you an idea how scary this is. All right, so Facebook has a policy against uh, like violence, right? But in Venezuela, there were people calling for an armed revolution, and Facebook said, that goes against our policies, delete it. Okay, this, is, this, is, this just kinda, it kinda blows your mind, right? So there could be people calling for an armed revolution, and it, it goes against Facebook policy. So f Facebook could single-handedly squelch, quash a, a rebellion, a revolution, right? Let that sink in for a second, all right? So I have covered a lot of things, and the, and the Project Veritas video that came out in, uh, anyway, so the project ended in February. Cognizant ended the, pro the contract prematurely, and I was still filming to the end. The last few weeks, I was filming every single day, talking to my coworkers. And uh, the, the, it, was the, it was during coronavirus and the news cycle was crazy, so we waited until June to, to come out with the video. So in, in June 25th, uh, I went public as a, as a whistleblower with Project Veritas. And uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. 
So, yeah, definitely it was one of the greatest experiences, I think, uh, working with Project Veritas with James O'Keefe. They have a great team. Um, so in that video, I mean, there was a lot of things that you saw, but there were a lot of things that you didn't see. And uh, I, I was able to release those screenshots a couple months ago, more more evidence. Um, and so, I, I, you know, some of the things that came out in the video five months ago, I, I, I showed that Facebook was giving exceptions to their policy. And, for example, when Don Lemon went on the air and he said, he said white males are terror threats, Facebook told us as content moderators, they said, hey, we know what Don Lemon said violated our own policy, but we're making a newsworthy exception to allow that phrase. Yeah. So this happened over and over again, and I documented this. Every time they give an exception, whether it was for Greta Thunberg or any left-wing ideology, it, it was always for, for these ideas from the left. And so um, those are a couple of things that I uncovered um, in the initial video. And I'll go, through, I'll go through here in detail some of those examples. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about, I have a list here. There's, there's literally 43 examples of bias that I found. Wow. All right, 43 examples. I have the screenshots. If you go to my Twitter right now, you can see the screenshots. Uh, my, my, my name is Ryan Hartwig, H-A-R-T-W-I-G. And my Twitter is at real Ryan Hartwig. And, it, and I went to, I actually grew up here in Mesa. I went to Westwood High. And uh, so I'm a local. Um, I ran, and it's funny, I, I ran for student council in high school. And so my last name is a little bit difficult. So my, I said, to learn my last name, I mean, I just say, I, I would just say, I have a heart, but not a wig. Heart wig. So that, that's the joke. So I wore a wig when I ran for student council at Westwood High. Um, <laughs> um, no, I, I didn't win that, that election yet, <laughs> but, but I got appointed to, uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, um, all right, so the video came out June 25th, right? All right, so, and then I, I gave that evidence where I filmed, I gave it to Congressman Matt Gates of Florida, and uh, he's, he's definitely a patriot. So I, what I did, I gave that to him, and, and as a consequence, he submitted a criminal referral to the DOJ for Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Once again, that's a criminal referral to DOJ because Zuckerberg testified in April 2018 that Facebook does not censor political speech. Yeah. Oh. Which, which they do, right? And my, my evidence showed that. Shut them down. And so, yeah, so that's what happened. So, and then uh, last month I was mentioned in an FEC complaint um, in Michigan involving the Senate race between John James and Gary Peters because Facebook fact-checked a transgender ad that was showing that the leftist candidate supported the the transgender thing where, where you allow you know women men to be in girls sports and such and so facebook essentially made an in-kind contribution to the democrats race so i was mentioning yeah, that complaint so i was able to help out a little bit um let me just go through a few examples all right <clears throat> so facebook says hey they want to prevent violence right well how do they treat cops on the platform so if i if you post a photo of a cop on on uh on uh, Facebook, like we had some cops here yesterday, yeah. and uh, <laughs> circling overhead. So yeah. you take a picture of a cop, that, that cop is a private individual for Facebook's policy. And you can't call anybody like a pig or call them a derogatory name like an animal. Like if I take a picture of, of someone here and I say, this person's a pig, then that gets deleted no matter what, no matter who reports it. <clears throat> so Facebook said, uh, calling a cop a pig applies except uh, you, Except it doesn't apply to cops. So they changed their policy to allow more attacks against cops. So now, exactly. Yeah. No mercy for And so, uh, so they, anyway, so they say they're against violence, but then they allow more attacks against cops. Um, and all right, something that really I covered that really shocked me, um, and one something that came out of the video is Facebook made another exception. They said, hey, you know, we don't allow attacks against any race or gender or, gender or sexual orientation, except, and you guess what, right? Except against straight white males. So, yeah, so you, they literally said, and this is documented, I have photo evidence. They said, because um, they gave a presentation about Pride Month, they said, the following phrase is allowed. Straight white males are filth for not supporting LGBT. That's allowed. So, so they violate, they, make, they, they, they break their own rules. Um, <clears throat> look, we all support Trump. Uh, we want Trump to win. Let's give it up for Donald Trump. Uh, 
So let me tell you something. So every time that Trump spoke or gave a speech, they told us as content moderators to look out for hate speech. Every time he's talked about the war, the border, the wall. So the phrase, keep Canadians out of the United States, that violates Facebook's hate speech policy for exclusion. So you can't talk about immigration. You can't discuss politics. Um, and um, there was a MAGA, there was a, a, a kid in Texas, a Trump supporter who got attacked in the summer of 2018 in a restaurant. And he was wearing a MAGA hat, he got attacked. It was a viral video. And Facebook said, delete that viral video. And the reason they gave it was, it was a very small reason. They said, delete it because the adult is, is cursing at the minor, at the minor. So something very, very minor. Um, and then we had another example of someone offering $100. If I said, hey, take this $100, go knock off that guy's MAGA hat. Is that violence? Yeah. So Facebook said, allow that. Um, there was a meme, a cartoon meme of Trump shooting himself in the head. You, have, you guys have kids, right? Your, your kids are on Facebook. You don't, want, you don't want to see like suicide or anything like that. So there was a meme, a cartoon meme of Trump shooting himself. And, fa Trump's, and Facebook said, allow that. So, and you have to imagine, there's about a thousand, a thousand content moderators that are site in Phoenix. And we were reviewing about 200 pieces of content a day. So you do the math. That's, that's thousands and thousands of con pieces of content that are getting deleted. And so there's a, it's a huge influence on, on the election. Um, so, okay, this is gonna, I know that this is a sensitive talk, topic for a lot of people, but what is, what do you think Facebook's stance is on abortion, right? Uh, so you're not gonna be a surprise, but actually seeing it in writing, their actual policy is shocking. So abortion, so we have a graphic violence policy, so if you share an image of a car accident or there's something gory, you know, it'll put an interstitial on it and we'll mark it as disturbing. So, so for Facebook, um, we asked about this, well, well, how do you guys treat abortion? You know, if you, we, we treat this graphic imagery a certain way, and Facebook said, abortion is not considered a violent day, death. Um, and, and, and also, this is word for word from their policy, fetuses are not considered human for Facebook. So this is unacceptable. Um, and this is even worse. This is worth forward. They said advocating for killing babies, babies or fetuses in an abortion context is not considered V and I or violence and incitement. This is just this makes me sick to my stomach. So, um, all right. So let's get to something. Let's let's talk about Greta Thunberg. All right. So, uh, so we all know who Greta Thunberg is, and uh, Facebook was. I think it was past December when she went to the UN summit and I think there was kind of an exchange between Trump and Greta. Do you guys remember that? Um, so Greta Thunberg was getting all these attacks and people were calling her retarded. Okay. So so retarded was an attack used on her and she's a public figure, she's a minor. So normally, like any other public figure, that would be allowed. If I call Jojo Siwa uh, retarded, that, that stays up on, on Facebook's platform. But once again, Facebook, what do you think they did? They made another exception to their own rules. And they said, we're gonna delete all instances of retarded on our platform. So they scoured the, the platform. They, they had their, their um, they proactively injected um, classifiers and they searched through and found any instance of retarded. So for a couple of days, all I deleted was retarded. I got hundreds of posts a day that I had to delete. Um, so that was kind of funny. Um, and now, this past December, we had the, the, there was the impeachment of Trump and there was people talking about Boogaloo and civil war. And I want to share with you a conversation I had with my coworker, with my supervisor. He was the policy manager, his name was Sean Browder. So we were supposed to raise up these trends of what we saw. We were supposed to monitor election trends. So it wasn't just doing the bad stuff, it was Facebook wanted to know what people were talking about on Facebook. And so, um, he, he, I was sending him content about Boogaloo and the Civil War, right? And so he said, uh, I'm gonna take a look at the jobs you sent, and if it's a Civil War stuff, I'm gonna send it straight to Facebook. And I said, is the Boogaloo serious, or are they joking? And he said, some people are joking, some are serious. That's the danger of leaving it on the platform, is where is that line? And then Sean said, excuse me, I got a little bit of congestion. Uh, Sean said, that's exactly the type of stuff that Facebook wants to see. Like, have they seen that type of stuff, like, leading up to the 2016 election? Like, they would have definitely, like, put some things in place to prevent it. 
and he does say like that often. I, that's an actual transcription from from what from the video. Um, it's kind of kind of funny to, to know that uh, kind of interesting. Every time I so I'd record during the day with my hidden camera, and I'd go home after my shift, and I would transcribe transcribe every conversation. So I did like a lot of transcribing of these these uh, video conversations. Um, yeah, and then Facebook has said, okay, here's something from, I don't have a date on this one. Facebook was monitoring, investigating the presence of far-right extremist groups at, outside of the U.S. So they're, anyways, as you can imagine, they're trying to target right-wing groups. Um, I'm trying to think of there's another, just in closing here, I want to give you a great example of Facebook's bias. And once again, you can see it on my Twitter, at Real Ryan Hartwig. But uh, for Facebook, so... If I call someone a Trump humper, do you think that's allowed on Facebook? Call him a Trump humper. Is that an attack? Trump, Trump humper. <laughs> so there's something called a negative character claim. So Facebook has a boring slang list, and they tell us whether to delete certain words or not that are pretty common. And so, like if I if I if I attack someone named Jim and I say Jim, you're a Trump humper, and he Jim actually reports it, there's more stuff. Would, there's a better chance of it getting take, getting taken down. But for Facebook, now you know, what if you call someone a feminazi or a snowflake? What do you think? How do you think Facebook treats that? <laughs> right? So yeah, literally I have, so if you call someone a Nazi, that's allowed. If you call someone a Trump humper, that's allowed. But if you call someone a, a feminazi or a snowflake, that gets deleted. So it just goes to show Facebook's bias. Um, once again, guys, my name is Ryan Hartwig. Uh, you can go to my website, ryanhartwig.org. I'm on Twitter. Uh, let's just give it up for, for Project Veritas and James O'Keefe, guys.